Okay, it's recording. Okay, guys, let's continue to take notes. So today we're going to talk about wind power and how it can help us to have better load by producing natural electricity using wind. So this is a picture of some windmills and the contents that we're going to talk about are the introduction, history, how it works, advantages, disadvantages, and conclusions. So harnessing the wind's natural power is by no means a new concept, and it's been going on for a while now. So some 20 years ago, no one knew what uh, wind power really was. But uh, it seems now that um, many people like to know what is wind power and uh, how this technology can uh, affect the future and how it works. It has many aspects um, and uh, so it helps bring a new goal uh, which is providing clean sustainable energy for future. Uh, it is true that uh, uh, you can easily use windmill and hydroelectric uh, turbines in order to harness energy in a good way. And uh, it doesn't hurt, uh, it doesn't destroy the uh, ozone layer. When was the wind energy first used? So in 500 BC, we can see that uh, wind energy is uh, lead boats to sail in the near river. Also, after that, in 200 BC, simple windmills were used by Chinese people in order to pump water. So they used the same technology to pump water. And then in more recent history, 20th century, they also were used to pump water and also generate electricity. So, how this energy is harnessed? So, what happens is that the sunlight heats the Earth's surface, and as a result, air heats up more faster on the land than it does on the sea. So, therefore, when these air, when these happen, when these events happen, more compact air continuously continues to go under a new layer of air, and it creates a current. And while this action happens continuously, this is how basically wind is produced. So this is a picture of a wind turbine, and I will explain to you how basically it works. So basically when you get wind, the blades start spinning around, and that leads to a generator. And while the rotors keep turning, the generator consists of conductors such as a cold wire, and that cold wire is the, surrounded by magnets. And then after that, the rotating shafts, so please, keep continuously turning around, that conductor is, and by continuously turning around, it creates and generates electrical currents. And then at the end, as you can see, I think it's clear, but there are sensors here, and these sensors help to like, when, so like, what happens is that while the turbine continues to rotate into the wind, so like, it's really hard to say. So basically what happens is that the sensors cause the top of the turbine to rotate facing the wind and it helps it helps the it helps the wind turbine to face whatever the wind is coming from in order to catch the wind in a better way and also face the best position of where the wind is coming from. And that it's also very flexible and stops spinning so like if if the wind is too powerful, the wind turbine automatically shuts down and the rotors stop spinning. So that there is no harmful damage caused to the turbine. And this is a chart, and it covers the United States. Together, as you can see, Europe is more. So this shows the United States, and this shows Europe of how fossil fuels and wind power are used. Basically. You know, the United States is the leading, um, is one, it's, it's in, in one of the top 10 countries that produces wind power and wind energy. 
But in the more recent years, you can see that it hasn't been doing, it hasn't been going very well in producing wind power, and Europe has been even more successful in producing even more wind, as you can see in here. So, uh, advantage of this energy, it can be used instead of fossil fuels. As you know, fossil fuels are uh, very dangerous for uh, because they uh, produce carbon dioxide. So, carbon dioxide is uh, dangerous for the atmosphere. And uh, so, wind power doesn't <coughs> uh, produce emission of hazardous gases. Uh, wind energy can easily produce enough electricity for the whole world. And uh, it's, uh, wind is free, so we can use it whenever we want and how much we want. Uh, if we compare wind, uh, wind power with uh, power station, we will realize that uh, wind power, I mean wind turbines, are, um, they have less, uh, less yeah. And here are the disadvantages. So, uh, wind turbines are alternate. So, uh, when we use it, uh, we have to uh, have uh, power. Have we have to have enough in, power. Yeah. Yeah, they have to be installed in remote areas and out of reach. And sometimes when they are place in such areas there's not enough wind and wind can be a really like it can be the down factor because you don't always get wind so it's actually really hard sometimes to harness the wind's energy so that's one of the main problems and also what happens is that birds from time to time crash into these wind, wind turbines and that causes a problem because of course it's a hazard to birds in general and it can cause problems to the water and they have to be replaced and fixed and it causes a lot of money and it's also expensive to install and operate. But if we could do it in the right way, it would be very effective. And also, uh, wind turbines are just in uh, mountains mount and in hills. On, they have to stand on hills. So uh, some people say that it will destroy the landscape. And as you can see, it's. Uh, funny picture of a bird. That, that's not caused by a bird crash, but it's just scared of them. They usually crash into it and they die. And this is our sources. And in conclusion, sorry, just one, the last part. So basically, what we see that wind power can be a great factor and can help us to have a, a better, more clean world and it doesn't cause any harm. So, if we continue to use this technology broadly, I think we can um, save a lot of money and not use fossil fuels and just have a better green climate, which is great. That's it.